In this video, I'll demonstrate how to validate a typical RIA protocol and how you may want to structure your acceptability criteria. When validating an assay, there isn't a single parameter that will automatically determine whether or not your run is acceptable. It's important to consider multiple parameters to ensure you're reporting high quality results. Some of the parameters you could use are control samples, R squared or goodness measures, standard precision and accuracy, and other parameters reported from the curve. The first thing that's recommended to check is simply looking at the curve. Does your fit seem to appropriately model the data? Are there any obvious outliers? Next, select a goodness of fit measure that you will use as your standard for assay validation. R squared is a relatively simple goodness measure where the closer the value is to one, the better the fit. You could define an acceptable limit. For example, the R squared value must be greater than 0.985. You can also use the curve data table listing the standards to confirm a good fit. The percent CV is a measure of precision between the replicates of the standards, and the percent accuracy is a measure of how the obtained concentration differs from the defined concentration. You can easily set acceptable thresholds using the standard curve fit transform, and standards that are within the limits are highlighted in green, and any standards that are outside the limits are highlighted in red. The default limits are set to 20, but you could change the limits to fit your needs. So how can you determine what a good threshold should be for accuracy and precision limits? Often the manufacturer will define an acceptable limit within the kit insert, but if they don't, you can set your own. A good rule of thumb is to use any included inter and intra assay precision data included in the kit insert. This data is included in the insert to demonstrate how the assay normally performs. If, for instance, the manufacturer reported five samples run across 20 different runs and returned percent CVs between 3 and 11, and within a single run, percent CVs between 4 and 7, a good starting point might be to set a 10 or 15 percent CV limit for your sample replicates. It's also important to run quality control samples within your run. These samples should be assayed on each run, and the resulting values recorded using a quality control software, like the functionality included in the MyAssays desktop quality control software. You can use guidelines like WestGuard rules to ensure that your assay stays in control. You may also decide to record other parameters, like the ED20, 50, and 80, the total count, NSB, and B0 CPMs. These parameters could be used in a troubleshooting capacity as opposed to for assay validation. For example, if you have a string of run failures and you notice a significant negative bias in the total count CPMs, it could be indicative of a premature degradation of the tracer reagent. This could, for example, prompt investigation into kit storage. I have an example RIA protocol with data already calculated. In order to determine assay validity, first I'll view the curve. It looks like a good fit to me. We can click on the standard curve fit tab in order to view the fit in an interactive chart. Back on the Report tab, we can see some of our other parameters. In this table, you can see the limits of quantification as well as the ED20, 50, and 80 values. Below this table, you can see the Curve Data Table. The Curve Data Table shows our calibrator information, and you can see that all of our standards are highlighted in green, meaning the precision and accuracy are all within the acceptable limits. These limits can be set using the Properties, Transforms tab, clicking on the standard Curve Fit, and using the quantification limits. We also have an evaluations table to report our total count, NSB, and B0 CPMs, as well as the R squared. I've added an evaluation label to the R squared row that will enter a pass symbol if the value is greater than 0.985 and a fail symbol if the value is less than 0.985. So in this case, our R squared is acceptable. Next, we can view the sample table, and it's recommended to sort of eyeball the results as well, just to make sure they're as expected. For example, not all less than or greater than the standard curve. The last parameter we'll check is the QC. I've used the QC option from My Assays Desktop to track and chart all observations for both controls. So on our QC chart tab, you can see that so far all of my observations have fallen between the mean and 2SD limits. And our current run is between mean and 1SD for control 1 and 1 and 2SDs for control 2. Your laboratory can define its own QC criteria, but a good starting point is to use WestGuard rules. So after viewing all of our parameters, in this example, I would accept this run as valid. 
I have another set of data to view, so let's go ahead and import that data now. Looking at our curve fit, the data still looks okay, but I think we may have an outlier in standard one. The R squared is still acceptable. And it looks like our QC is still between the mean and two SDs, even if only barely on control two. However, when we view the curve data chart, we can see that both standards one and standard six fail our criteria. Standard 1 shows a low level of precision, as indicated by the high percent CV, which may point to an outlier. And Standard 6 has a concentration that differs too much from the defined concentration indicated by the percent accuracy. So let's take a look at the interactive chart. So here's Standard 1, and if I'd like to remove an outlier, I can just left click on it, and we'll be prompted to recalculate our data. You can see the curve data table now shows all standards highlighted in green. The percent CV for standard one is now zero because there's only a single replicate, and the new curve fit also greatly improves the accuracy from standard six. The R squared is also higher, and if we look at our QC chart, we can see that the value for control two is closer to the mean. This data set is a good example of why it's important to take into consideration multiple parameters to ensure your assay is valid. If you have any questions about what parameters can be used to help validate your RIA, please email us at support at myassays.com.